I was buying a new 13 inch. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we have right here the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Pro, and the 16 inch Intel Beast Developer Choice MacBook Pro that I'm currently using for development. And we have an amazing set of tests for you guys to give you a real world experience. Can you actually use these Macs? Are you actually excited about the M1 chip? I kind of am, I love the quietness, but I am scared AF of Big Sur, privacy, location tracking, all of this kind of like restrictions, lockdown that's gonna happen with Big Sur. And of course, you know, supporting Intel Macs. Will it work well? So I'm gonna be testing Xcode, Android Studio, 3D game engine development, 3D games. I'm gonna be testing out machine learning performance. That's right, we're gonna be doing TensorFlow. Go with the flow, it's gonna be fun. First up, let's jump straight into Xcode. Three of the same projects. Gonna start these guys off first. Three, two, one, go, go. Hopefully it's running, all building. Of course, this one started one second behind these guys. But as you can see, it seems to be performing all well. The Air is actually winning. winning. <laughs> can you believe that the Air, faster than a pro, built faster than a pro, the Air is built faster than a pro. You know, I'm gonna do one thing. I'm turning off air conditioning because in real world, you're not always gonna be guaranteed to be working in cool climates. So the airflow is turned off in the room. Which one's gonna launch it first? The simulator is up and running on the air. The app is launched on the Pro. It is the slowest. The Pro 16 inch is the slowest at building and running Swift projects. At least it's basic machine learning based Swift project. So the Air one, the 16 inch came second and the 13 inch Pro for some reason, maybe it's because it's stuck in the middle with airflow. Actually, why is the Pro so slow to launch? Noticeably very, very slow. That's a weird, weird, it, it's, look how slow it's going. That is a shocker. The Air has destroyed the Pro and the 16 inch Pro and the 13 inch Pro is taking this way all the time. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna restart my systems and launch a more powerful Xcode project with C++ in it. It's a, oh, the Pro and then the Air. The Pro is winning, the 16 inch are slightly behind the show, but now that it's back up, look, look, it's flying through the colors. T2 chip, all integrated, the Pro, the 13 inch Pro has won that race. Next up, is it gonna be the 16 inch or is it gonna be the Air? Side by side. Oh, is the Air and the 16 inch kind of like neck on neck. There are differences between these systems. This has 256 gigabytes of storage. This has 512 and this has two terabytes. So perhaps the Pro won purely because the T2 chip had less to check. All right, I've now set up Player, an indie 3D game engine. It has C++ code, it has Objective C code, and it has, it doesn't have any Swift, but it's a bigger project than the last one. Let's see if they run. I'm gonna start these off first. Three, two, one, go, go. iPod Touch Simulator is about to be run. So the air flying through the compilation tasks, the Pro second, so this is twice that the air has beaten the Pro, and last but not least, the 16 inch are just ever so slightly behind. Now that we've tested out a bit of iOS, I think it's only fair that we jump into Android, but one thing I am noticing is that on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's turning into Fan Noise City. I can audibly hear the fans. I can't hear anything on the air. It doesn't have a fan. Can't hear anything on the Pro. It does have a fan, but the 16 inch, I'll let you guys listen. All right, so this is Android Studio. Everything's been set up on this C++ 3D game engine project. I'm gonna launch Android Studio from scratch at the same time now these projects have already been indexed, they've been set up, so it should just launch. Three, two, one, go, go. And poof, 16 inch straight away has launched, followed by the Air, followed by the Pro. So, yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a noticeable difference. You do have to wait around five extra seconds on these emulated systems because it's using Rosetta 2. The project tree has been loaded straight away on a 16 inch on the 13 inch and the air. Yeah, it's about 10 seconds in total slower to launch up, but that is irrelevant because let's see how quickly it can compile these projects. We saw that the air was actually faster to compile Xcode. Can it compile C++ and Java faster than the 16 inch? Okay, let's see, go. Now this is all set up on the default Android Studio settings. I'm keeping them all at parity with each other and C++, 
the 16 incher is flying through the task and so is the 13 incher air and the pro seems to be the slowest one is there silicon lottery in apple's m1 silicon lottery because i feel like the air actually has a better cpu than the pro i've seen this happen in the intel set of i9 processors where i had two identical macbook pros and one i9 was 10% faster than my other i9. So maybe there is a bit of silicon lottery or maybe the air is just functioning slightly better. C++ on the 16 incher has been done. The i9 has completed the task in 41 seconds. So let's see how much slower the M1 is at compiling C++ code. Now, of course, the fact that it's keeping pace with an eight core i9 beast of a CPU is pretty impressive. And the air is done. It took one minute and two seconds and the Pro is done one minute and nine seconds. So we're getting about a 30% performance negligence on the M1 chips, but that is pretty amazing. If you think about it, it is emulating the whole IDE. When, when Android Studio gets optimized for ARM, this is gonna fly. Now there is one big problem with Android Studio. The emulators do not work. Hopefully it will get fixed soon, but yeah, you can emulate Android apps on the 16 inch Intel based one, but the emulators don't work on, <laughs> on these guys. It, should, it should, should get fixed soon because all when you're coming to Android phone is ARM. So I don't see why it won't get fixed very soon. Other than that, let's just see launching files. Ship R, Android, do a search. Down, down, down. Launching a file just randomly seems to be just about the same sort of speed. So I'm not noticing a difference in actually using the editor. It's just purely compilation is about 30% slower. Compilation is about 30% slower. So I think next up we'll do 3D game engine development. But before we do 3D game engine development, let's see how well 3D games perform. Off to Epic Games Launcher we go. So settings wise, I'm going with high at 1600p. I'm not gonna go with Epic. Epic doesn't even run well on my 16 inch so we're gonna go high, try seeing how close to 60 frames a second we can get on these bad boys. If it runs, runs more than 30 frames a second, I will be impressed. So we're getting right there, 39 frames a second on the air. Um, it's a bit buggy. What's getting on there? For some reason, he keeps running backwards. Ah, oh, so, whew, did you see that? There is a bit of issues with this keyboard. It had the S key press down when I let it go. Hopefully that was just a one-off, bit of dust went in there or something. But yeah, 35, 37, 38, 39 frames a second. And again, 38 frames a second. Epic Games Launcher would like to access your microphone. Why Epic? Why does the launcher need to record your voice? Why? All right, we're in. And frame rates, we're getting 60 frames a second. It is locked. I actually need to go into settings and make a higher frame rate because it is really good. So escaped here. We are still getting up to 70 frames a second, between 55 and 70 frames a second. The lowest I've seen it drop right now is 40. So I guess the 16 incher is about 30% faster as well compared to these guys. And this game, this game isn't even optimized for ARM yet. It's running on Intel. So when Epic decide, if hopefully they do, decide to release a version of Fortnite that is dedicated to ARM, these guys should perform the same or better than the 16 inch. <laughs> and one of the biggest problems with the 16 inch is the fan noise nation that you get out of it. Like how can you work when the fans are going crazy? Whenever I plug the 16 inch into my external display, try doing some work, noisy, noisy, noisy. These guys, I plugged them into an external display and they ran fine. So there's really good potential I'm seeing with these guys. And I guess you just have to accept the new terms and conditions that you get with Big Sur and just move on with your life. The future is the way of the direction to go. But now let's get out of this gaming and let's try making a 3D game ourselves. So we're gonna jump into Unreal Engine. All right, so we're now about to launch Unreal Engine 4. This is the infiltrator demo. I've deleted the cache folder. So they all should launch at the same sort of status. So three, two, one, go, 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 start. All right, I launch the Air one second in head, the Pro one second behind, and the Pro 16 about two seconds behind. We are three and a half minutes into this. The fan noise of the 16 inch is going mental. 14 nanometers versus five nanometers. And you can see that five nanometers is a lot cooler. Now this is intense because we're at 95%. 16 inch is about to launch the editor. Okay, the 16 inch has now 
launched. We're in the editor right now. It's compiling shaders, 20,000 and a half shaders to go. The pro is behind, the air is behind. All right, nine minutes, 15 seconds. The pro has now launched the editor. It's up on the screen. That makes it around one and a half minutes slower to launch the editor. We got 21, almost 22,000 shaders to go for its finished compilation. So even though the Pro, the 16 inch launched the editor the fastest, it also compiled the most shaders in the background. These Macs, of course, have four high performance cores and four low performance energy efficient cores. So I'm guessing the eight cores from the i9 14 nanometer, you know, burden fan noise city CPU is it's doing its tricks, but is it worth the extra minute and a half compilation time? I don't think so. And especially when Epic optimized Unreal Engine for ARM, I think these guys will destroy this guy. So yeah, this M1 says, oh, look at that. The air is now up on the screen. So the air was around 45 seconds slower than the Pro 13 inch. It also has around 22,000 shaders to go. So this is now the compilation of shaders showdown all Macs are going crazy. All right, we are about almost half an hour into this mess. 28 and 51 seconds to be precise. And on the Air, we've got 17 and a half thousand shaders to go. On the Pro, we've got 14 and a half thousand shaders to go. So you can see kind of a distance, a lead winning on the Pro between the Air. Not significant, but still a lead nonetheless. And on the Pro 16 inch, it's 8,000 and a half shaders to go kind of like double the speed of the 13 inch. So I want to get a bit more insight right now. I'm going to jump into activity monitor. So we can see here that the CPU is getting hammered on all of the processors and the GPU is also around 50%. On the M1s, you get eight cores and eight threads. On the Intels, you get 16 threads. It's using hyper threading technology, which is a bit insecure in today's world. It's always getting hacked and all that kind of stuff. So probably eight simple cores makes more sense to me from a security standoff. Performance wise, we're getting around 250% Unreal Editor on all of them, and the rest of it is just shader compilation work. We can see that there's four instances of shader compiler on the Air, and four instances on the Pro here. But on the Pro 16, we've got eight instances because it thinks it has twice as many cores. Seems to be working, it is performing slightly more. However, let's see what the difference maker is in the RAM because this one actually has 32 gigabytes RAM where these guys only have eight. And the fact that they're keeping up with the 16 inch is pretty amazing in my book. So in memory, in memory, we can see that the Air is using 6.8 gigabytes of memory. The Pro is using 6.8 also. And the Pro 16 inch is using 26.7 gigabytes of memory. And most of it is in cache files. You got five gigabytes worth in cache. These guys, they only have around one gigabyte wide memory, which is the memory that is needed to be required. It's only two gigabytes here, two gigabytes there, and three gigabytes on the Pro 16 inch. Compressed, we're getting one gigabyte and one gigabyte on all of them. And the swap, the amount of the swap used is three and a half here, five and a half on the Pro, and pretty much nothing used on the Pro 16 inch. So I'd say if you can get more RAM, to avoid the swap getting hit, I'd get 16 gigabytes instead of eight. All right, so around 40 minutes into the show, I'm gonna check out the heat coming out of these max. So the air, I can see it's going around 42 degrees. The Pro 13 inch is going around 43.8 right now, 43.5. And the Pro 16 inch, 44, 42 and a half, 43. So I say the max with active cooling, they're definitely going hotter than the air. I'm guessing Apple have clocked down the air because it doesn't have the active cooling. That being said, 15,000 shaders, 10,000 shaders. I guess it's getting about 50% slower. It's still doing the damage though. It's not as slow as I remember the 12 inch MacBook that never had a fan. That guy would really chug the system. I mean, just look, I'm still able to switch and use applications on the show, I'm swiping left and right. It's not sluggish, it's still usable. And the Pro is also the same sort of frame rate on the screen, same sort of frame rate. So it's not as bad as what the 12 inch was, but it is definitely running a bit slower. That being said, it's also running one degrees cooler than the two big beast mode pros. Also, the fans on these guys, they're on their max. I can actually hear the 13 inch. It is revving, nothing as close as the 16 inch. That guy is just going bad boy crazy. 
That's the big, big beast kind of mode. And still, still got 2,000 shaders to go. We are 42 minutes in. Whew, these are, maybe get a Windows laptop if you wanna do Unreal. 45 minutes to go. And this room is a bit of a furnace, so I've just quickly made myself a, a nice tea to calm myself down. Mm. 46 minutes now. The Pro 16 inch -er. it's, it's almost gonna finish compiling. 30, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 2. We're about to do it. It's taken, oh man, it's taken the 16 inch -er. 46 minutes to compile the shaders and launch this level. And now that it's launched, it's just running at 12 frames a second. It's really struggling to do it in epic settings. The Pro 13 inch -er still has another 8,000 shaders to go and the Air has almost 14,000 shaders to go. Oh, all right. Okay, the Pro 13 inch -er, it's got 91 shaders to go. We are now one hour and six minutes into this test. Wow. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, all that kind of nonsense. One hour and seven minutes and it's done. Lap. So it's 21 minutes slower to launch Unreal Engine for the first time in this demo project than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's all right. I was expecting it to be slower considering this is a five, five nanometer CPU. It's doing <laughs> what's it? Rosetta 2 translation from Intel to ARM. That's a, uh, I'm gonna give it a little round of applause and just check out the GPU. What is going on here? We're getting 23 frames a second, whereas the 16 inch is only going 12 and a half. Of course, at uh, the air, that's 10,000 shaders to go. I'm estimating this will take another half an hour, just given its performance. It's just clocked down, it's going 20 frames a second, but it's not as usable for compiling shaders from scratch. Now, one thing about compiling shaders is once it's compiled, it's pretty much compiled for until you need to recompile it and you don't, unless you're doing rendering, lots of graphics, rewriting shaders, you don't tend to do that as often. So once it's compiled, you pretty much, it's all about how usable it could be. So we'll still test it out in the air because maybe you just leave this alone for a couple of hours and come back to it once it's ready after the initial setup. Anyway, they say love is a battlefield. I think they're wrong. Unreal Engine's a battlefield. Yeah, it's just stored on a 16 inch -er. What is this nonsense? All right, what I'm launching now is a less intensive project. The infiltrator demo that's made for PlayStations, that's made for PCs, that's made for Windows. This guy, however, is the Action RPG. That one's made for mobile phones. So that is probably the best fit for a Mac making a game. You probably wanna make a mobile game, an iOS game, not something too intensive. Four minutes and 40 seconds in, the editor has launched on the Pro 16 inch. And this is interesting, look at that. Right there on the screen, the Air has launched faster than the Pro. That is, uh, what, what's going on? I was expecting this guy to win with his fan. Don't quite believe that result, so I'm gonna run it again one more time. All right, in just under four minutes, the 16 inch Pro has launched the editor, and boom, just like that, the 13 inch Pro is now ahead. It was a whole minute and 20 seconds slower than the Pro 16 inch. They're both around 7,000 shaders. This one's 7,500 shaders to go. This was 6,700 shaders to go. Now on the second run, the air is slower. I think I used too much of its threshold. Basically, if you use it for longer than about 10 minutes, it seems like it does clock down. All right, the air is now up and running. Six minutes and 41 seconds, about a minute and 20 seconds behind the Pro and the Pro was a minute and 20 seconds behind the Pro 16 incher. 7,000 and a half shaders to go, 7,000 shaders to go, 6,000 shaders to go. Getting 60 frames a second, super smooth, medium engine scalability. We learned our lesson from the past demonstration. This one, we're getting 30 frames a second. So it's still very usable, even though it's compiling 7,000 shaders to go. And this guy, the Pro 16 inch, it's 16 frames a second is, whew, I think the CPU is so strong that it's taking power away from the GPU. That's why it's going a bit slower than the other guys. Very smooth. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get away from Unreal Engine. Pretty, this room's gotten too, too warm for that. And let's jump into something a bit more reasonable and that's Unity 3D. Go, start. 
All right, there you have it. The 16 inch is up and running. That was done in three minutes and 20 seconds. Next, how much slower is the Air or Pro going to be? All right, the Pro has now launched five minutes in. So that makes it one and a half minutes slower than a Pro 16 inch. Last but not least, the Air should be coming very soon. And boom, five minutes and 40 seconds. The Air has come through the show, 30 seconds slower than the Pro 13 incher, and uh, you know, a good two minutes slower than the 16 incher. But remember the guys, this is using Rosetta 2 to emulate <laughs> Intel's x86 platform. So as soon as Unity released their ARM version of this editor, I have a, this, this 16 incher has become obsolete. It's becoming obsolete, I can't believe it. And on the Air, we're getting around 200 to 250 frames a second. On the Pro, we're getting 180 to 230 frames a second. And on the Pro 16 inch, we're getting 270 to 300 frames a second. It's variable. You're not gonna tell the difference on this demo. Let's run around. Seems pretty cool, pretty fun to play. 170 frames a second over here, 230. Minus stall, because I probably didn't use it. Hey, sui, snozzy world. 150 frames a second, 160 frames a second. Unity 3D works really well on this guy. However, let's see how fast it will build the project. Okay, the 16 inch is done. One minute and 19 seconds. Boom, the Pro is now done. Two minutes and 10 seconds. And the Air is done. Two minute and 15 seconds. So that was pretty much very close. Of course, slower than the Pro 16 inch, but when it gets ported over to ARM, Unity is, uh, these guys are gonna be just as competitive as the 16 incher, that's scary. Looks like with the Air, if you're doing anything intensive, under five minutes should work really well. It's just when it goes over five minutes, then you start to notice the slowdown. This is, this is, this is, this is amazing. I'm very, very impressed. And this guy is fan noisy. I guess as a developer, I'd still, I'm, I'm still gonna use the 16 incher as my daily because I need it and I don't wanna go through the pains of the issues that you're gonna get with this guy. There's gonna be issues, I don't like that. But if I was new to the market and I'm after a 13 incher, the question is, do I get the 10th gen Intel 13 incher or do I get the M1 13 incher? And that one, that one's, uh, that one's a harder choice to decide on than I thought it'd be. I thought the Intel one definitely gotta get it for compatibility, but the performance of these guys and the noise is starting to make me think slightly differently. And these are only gonna get faster as applications port their apps to universal binaries. Okay, that's enough of this Unreal. That's enough of this 3D game development. I'm gonna jump into machine learning. I wanna see how good this machine learning chip can perform. I've heard great news about it. So I'm gonna be installing the latest Apple version of TensorFlow, which is actually optimized for this chip. And apparently it's gonna blow the socks off the 16 incher. The air is gonna destroy the 16 incher. Do you believe that? Let's do it. All right, so I now have TensorFlows installed on these systems. I got the latest Apple cooked version of TensorFlow, which is optimized for M1 on these two Macs. And I have the latest version of TensorFlow, regular two point on this 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'm gonna be doing auto encoding neural networks. This is a data set of 60,000, three, two, one, go, go. All right, they're all going. Now, something interesting, the 16 inch, I can already hear core wine on the CPU. There's some serious static noise coming out of this 16 inch core wine city, but you can see that it is winning. It's on step 4,000 already, whereas these guys are only on step 2,000. 5,000. We're done on the 16 incher. However, these guys, they're still behind. So 20,000 on the screen. These guys are still on 11,000. So according to Apple, the M1 destroys, destroys all. Look at how much of a performance improvement that's got going from gray all the way down to orange. However, it looks like uh, the 16 incher, at least in this example, won. It was twice as fast and machine learning. It was using Intel's AVX instruction set to do some of that processing power, but at least in this auto encoder neural network, 16 inch up one, twice as fast. I gotta see what kind of samples Apple have done to get it working so much faster. Look at that before and after. What have they done? Needs more investigation. And both M1s were neck and neck. The Air and the Pro finished 
the machine learning exercise at the same time. So what have we learned today? We learned that these M1s have a good, 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 good potential. There are still some issues with applications until they've been ported over to ARM. Android Studio, you can't launch the emulator. Unreal Engine runs a little bit slow, but it does run and they all do work. And interestingly enough, the M1s, they don't use hyper threading, which means you don't necessarily need as much net RAM as you would have on the hyper threaded Intel CPUs. For example, Unreal Engine, when it was compiling shaders, it had eight processes. Normally you need two gigabytes per process to have a nice healthy compilation time. Whereas on the M1s, because it's half the amount of processes, because it uses eight cores instead of 16 cores, you don't need as much, you don't need as much memory. That's not to say that 16 gigabytes won't help you out. Me personally, while I am very impressed with these M1s, I probably will just go for a Mac mini for development reasons. It is cheaper and it's the fastest running. And I do have an external monitor that I'll just debunk my applications. And whether I'd replace my 16 inch with one of these smaller ones, I will probably stick to my 16 incher fan noise city included and just wait until Apple release a new, new 16 incher. That's probably the one to get. And uh, if I was buying a new 13 inch, I'd definitely consider these M1s over the Intel CPUs. There is gonna be more bugs with these M1s. You won't be able to run Windows as well as you can on the Intel ones, but they have so much potential. I'm sure as soon as all the applications are ported over to ARMS, these guys will be flying. Let me know what you guys think out there in the world, and I hope you found this video useful, and of course, enjoyed the show. Wow, handwriting. I'm tired.